Um, I'm going to do a screen share of a presentation. It's, I now know that I can have notes and such afterwards. So I probably would have done it a little differently um, because it looks a little wordy, but really the most important thing I think is probably just the conversation and those will be my reference points. Um, so I really, um, I'm going to get started with this, I think. Hi, everybody. I think how many of us, there's 11 of us on here. Yeah. Okay. So what I want to talk about a little bit today, it's a little different than your typical training module. And there's a lot going on out there right now. And there's a lot of really great stuff out there about, um, you know, pivoting and, you know, focusing on the consumer and, and, you know, where we expect the market to be. One thing I would like to focus on, or I think is, is important is where is the mindset of the consumer going to be? I think, and I don't just mean as far as their, their physical needs, how will that shift? And certainly we're going to uh, speak about that, but also what is their emotional state? Because I'm sure as all of you know, we deal with um, highly charged situations um, on the regular right uh so how could that change and also how how are we already um fairly prepared for that uh based on the nature of our role um our experience in our role as as realtors um so i i researched a little bit more about sort of what is going on with the society and sort of the mental health uh, implications. And then also looking at what is the, what's going on with, with how consumers are purchasing and how things are changing. So I'm gonna bring up my uh, little screen share here. So bear with me, let's bring that up. Oh, pause, no. Um, okay, can everybody see this? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm just going to move this a little here for me. Okay, so how will COVID-19 change consumer behavior? So the first thing I want to talk about, and I, I just briefly mentioned this, is how are we as realtors kind of training, have, how have we been training all these years to help people through this? you're going to find some similarities in a moment when I show you with what people are going through right now and what we go through on the regular in our job. And if you, if you can realize that there is such a commonality, uh, the, the goal and the hope is that you can help others through it right now. Um, obviously, we have a duty to, to pivot our focus uh, as well. So, so, so not only can we show them how we've managed over the years, but also pivot our focus of where we need to help them. Anybody that's been an agent for a long time knows that it really shifts dramatically. What the client needs right now is certainly not what the client needed 10 and 15 years ago. You know, gone are the big old MLS books, gone are, um, you know, the need for discovering uh, stuff on, um, you know, the history of the home as far as sales history, because they can get that. So there has been a shift to sort of that emotional connection in recent years anyway, because that's where we can provide service that and of course, our, our ex expertise um, in the handling of, of the documents and, and such. But there's been a greater shift over the years. And I think this is really going to um, spearhead that and, and make it much more pronounced. Um, so based on projections of our future consumer demand also coupled with how we need to help people through this emotional time we can kind of pinpoint what we need to do to help grow our our business but more importantly the business that we grow have them as a like huge referral base because i really feel strongly that we are going to make greater connections with our clients and and they are really going to refer us i am very much a what i call relational realtor so sort of very emotionally invested. And what that has shown me is that referrals, past referrals are my greatest source of business. So when people feel connected to you, they want to help you in turn um, by, by giving, you know, referrals and future clients and such. So um, how does our career parallel the current situation? So let's look at this. Real estate agent. 
<laughs> our every day is an emotional and financial roller coaster. Okay, so one day we're like, dollar dollar bills, y'all, I have four, four deals going. And then the next day, what happened? And you have to restart. And that is a that is an up and down that I'm sure anybody that's been doing this for a little while recognizes um, that it, it and it, it can be quite significant from day to day. Um, as well financially, not just the emotions, but one day or you have a good month or a good few months and you're feeling really good about where you're at in life and you know the, the, your business is coming together and then the next few months you're like, what happens? Where's my business? Where are my clients, right? So that's what people are going through right now, right? So one day they wake up and the news, the media is fantastic about where we're headed with, with COVID and projections about coming you know, coming back to, to, to work and regular life. And then the next day they find out, oh, well, schools cancel for another month or they're going to be limiting this or the numbers. Oh, there was a big growth rate over the last few days. Um, you know, I don't have any money. I lost my job. Oh, the government is giving me money. Um, oh, it's not enough money. Oh, it's taxed. Like, so people that have typically been in more sort of stable emotional environments are not right now. For us, we take for granted that, that that's a thing because we go through it so often, but for many people, this is very, very new to them. For us, we wake up every day unemployed. I like to say that every morning I wake up, I'm unemployed and how am I gonna create employment, right? Um, we know how to, or we should know how to sort of self-create. Right now, I think what the general consumers are, are, you know, what people are going through right now is that they are realizing that a lot of this sort of external security is kind of false, right? It can, you can think you're as secure as, as anybody can be, but realistically, um, it can be gone overnight as it, as it is, right? So that you have to become more resourceful. We're seeing people become resourceful. Um, side jobs, you know, all these, all these little different things, making masks, cooking, baking, selling it. And they're starting to realize that they are a little more resourceful. Uh, dealing with people's very heightened emotions. So we see people at their very best and their very worst, right? Um, and right now, the general population is seeing everybody at their very best and their very worst. When you go to the grocery store, it's not fun right now. Right. But also when you're online and you're connecting to your friends via a Zoom or Facebook or whatever, that sense of connection, I think, is it's deeper. Right. Um, because you understand now how important it is. So I think that, you know, they are experiencing what we experience on the regular with people in transactions our job is to try and fix broken situations, right? That's, that's our job. Writing an offer is one thing, getting through it all and dealing with all the pitfalls that come along. That's what we do. If, and if we do it well, we tend to be successful. Um, and, and so many people right now, because they feel so powerless in, a, in, in life, they are wanting to help and fix situations. Um, again, they're becoming very creative. They're coming up with even, you know, COVID aside, our, our, our recent tragedy, and you look at the people that are doing fundraisers and all these different things. So people are getting together um, and, and fixing, right? And to me, this is a big one. Um, needing to exude confidence when, sorry, I don't know what happened here. You guys can probably see that as well. I don't know why that came up. Okay, uh, needing to exude confidence even when you're not. If you're a newbie agent, you know, this is probably the most important thing you can do right now is create a consumer confidence. And I think a lot of parents, employers, our good friends are doing the same right now. They're trying to be the strong individual for their children, their employees, their whatever. And they're having to create this sort of external, I don't know if I want to say false, but this external strength when inside they might still be scared. They might still feel vulnerable. So these things you know it's a good thing to really think about and contemplate because um yes. this is what you know these people are, are this is what they're going through this is this is what we do and so it gives us a little more empathy for them and it also for us it's interesting because it shows us how not to be so hard on ourselves as agents 
because these poor people are probably, you know, you see them lashing out, you see them maybe drinking more, you see them doing all these things and you're like, wow, that's what we go through on the regular as an agent and we're still around and we're still all relatively, you know, healthy of mind. Some, you know, as much as we can be. Um, does that make sense to everyone? Or had anyone thought about that beforehand? No? Yeah. One second here. Okay. So the current emotional impact on society, we're in like the largest psychological experiment ever right now, really. And it's different than in, in past history because now we have the social platform to be able to talk about it and measure it and do all these different things. So what our next stage is, um, while we've seen it in small scale in, in, in different areas where there's been, you know, pandemic and, and trauma and, and war and everything, I think for, for North America and developed countries, um, this is probably one of the biggest in, in quite some time. And so what the next stage, um, what's it going to be? And that is going to affect us as, as salespeople. And it's also going to affect, you know, society as a whole. Um, what we know about epidemics is that typically there's a lot of after effects afterwards. A lot of people are in fight or flight right now. So what we're going to see of our consumers is we're maybe not seeing so much of it right now. But in six to 12 months, we're going to see their behavior change, right? Um, them taking action can help mitigate some of the toxic effects in the future, the emotional effects, right? Um, of, of some of the negative uh, byproducts of what we're going through right now. And everybody, you and I and our consumer is completely reassessing all of their values, all of them. Uh, I don't know enough one person that isn't going through like a mini midlife crisis right right now and trying saying okay what really is important to me uh and i think the big one is that so many people are getting a better understanding of the power of connection with people how when you don't have it it does us a disservice and it harms us um like social distancing and then when you do have it so we're finding these other means but because we're in a bubble and we're connecting we actually realize how significant those relationships are. Um, so this is just a little bit here on, on a study of people. This is a recent study, guys, that, that um, has been going on in European countries about the psychological impact of quarantine, all right? So what we're gonna see is stress, anxiety, anger, low mood, irritability. We kind of see this from clients on the regular now. Um, certainly we see the flip side of it, but goodness knows we see them when they're just like bottlenecked. So this is to prepare us for the fact that we are going to likely see this um, tenfold because we, we have clients in their most vulnerable with one of their largest assets. And then you couple in what's going on in the world right now, and then you couple in um, the, the future job loss and all these things. So if you can study up on how it is to better handle people that do um, suffer from stress and anxiety and all of that type of stuff, and also look at how you act, how you've acted over the years as an agent, what has helped you, um, what has after a terrible day and you come home and you need to release it all, what are some of those good um, quality things that you have learned to do to adapt to, to help really um, release. Um, some of the people that are really going to be impacted are the younger generation. So under they, they've done studies through the World Economic Forum and people 30 and under are, are the ones that are greatly impacted by this. So when we look at that 30 and under, well, this is our next, these are our first time buyers. Right. So our first time buyers are going to have um, likely in the near future some some even more serious issues with stress and anxiety. So I think that our role fundamentally is going to be a bit more of a psychologist than it is just the nuts and bolts of a transaction. Um, so, you know, how can people currently help, you know, yes, deal with. Sorry. Oh, I someone talking. Um, so how can people currently deal with the, the overload of emotion? Um, I'm only going to briefly talk about this because you guys can go ahead and take this and run with it if you want to. But 
we all know that there are many things that can be done to help with the um, when you're in the midst of trauma, uh, when you're in the midst of anxiety and, and, and this situation that we're in. Um, I don't think everybody does it. We know like we all know we need to go for runs and meditate and all that kind of stuff. But a lot of us don't do it, myself included, um, some of the time. But the key message is, and this is for us and our clients, that the more that we do now for ourselves, for our mental health now, will help us in our future. And if we can learn these tools, we can teach them to our clients to help them. You know, it's very simple things. Connect with others support them, video calls, all of that type of stuff. Um, talk about it. So often as agents, there are agents out there that try and show that they are the business professional and that they are sort of stern and staunch and they don't sort of open up. I recommend that we flip that script a little bit, that we listen to our clients and pick up on their cues that they may be having troubles in life in anything and that we relate. I think relating is going to be very important. And the more that we as agents and the more that we as friends and colleagues and family can do that, the better we're going to be able to cope with um, our future feelings, right? Obviously look after your physical well-being. It's a no brainer, right? Those types of things, your sleep, managing your feelings. Here's the big one guys that people are going through that I'm sure you and I are going through. We're following what's going on in the marketplace, you know, home values and everything. Just be careful what you watch. Be careful. There's so much out there. There's so much data. It creates so much anxiety. Um, it creates so much stress and fear. You can't, con once you get, you know, consumed with fear, once our clients get consumed with fear, it's very hard to control, but you can control what information you receive. So, Keep that in mind with the information that you give your clients, the information you give them about the future market and projections and all of that type of stuff. Um, it is important that we call it back, call it and make sure that it is only necessary information. Um, I know that there are some agents that, you know, you better buy a home now because we don't know what the future is going to hold and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, just be careful, just be careful because there are outlying impacts with that when we use that approach and again facts let's become fact-based around all of this there's a lot of information going around um, we can talk about you know the health right now and also a lot of information going around projections about what our market is going to be like there is no proper projection right, this real estate market has not been through a pandemic before i mean we can we can all say that so we have to be very careful about what we tell our clients about where our market is headed um, you know, I think we can instill confidence and faith without having to say that, you know, for sure that things are going to be okay. Um, we certainly don't know for sure that our, our market is going to vomit at, bottom out or that values are going to drop. So I think that, you know, be very careful with, with what we do tell them. Um, and then, you know, really, and this is more for us. It's really about our daily routines around all of this. This is the perfect time to sit back and plan. Um, if you ask Deb, um, who, who works with me, and, and um, Anthony and Luke, what are we doing every day? We are planning. Yes, the deals are not coming in the same. Everybody knows that. Um, but what else? You got to keep your mind busy. You know, strategy, it, there's a clarity of focus when you don't have those other busy things um, happening. Um, so now is the perfect time to sit back and, and plan and, and assess how you're handling this, how you've handled your past role as an agent and how you can help your clients and what kind of, um, what kind of conversation you have with them. And at the same time, please do the things that you enjoy and, and, and remind your clients to do the things that they enjoy. Doom and gloom. I mean, obviously there's issues going on right now, um, but I don't think we're celebrating the enjoyment. I, some people are. The people that are online and baking and doing all these kind of things. I mean, I'm not going to start baking. Don't get me wrong. I have Deb for that. Um, <laughs> but, but um, you know, if we can focus on the things that we can enjoy and, and show our clients uh, that they should do the same. Um, I think it will be very helpful. I also believe that cl the clients that are focusing on what they enjoy now is going to um, lead into how and what they purchase. So it's really important to look at because we need to understand consu future consumer behavior, right? Um, 
and of course setting goals because when you're in a situation like this where every day is the same we need to set goals let's get our clients setting goals um writing out lists of what they are looking for in a home and and having conversations about you know even the home even if they don't want to buy right now if they make sure that they're looking at the virtual tours if they don't want to sell right now if they want to go online and and say i'll spend five minutes online looking at what is selling so it, that's twofold. One, it helps hone down on where they're going, but two, it also provides a focus, right? So, and that's to keep their mind healthy, um, just as we can do the same in our everyday routine. Keep your mind active, right? That's the kind of thing. So, um, what what I the next thing I really want to talk about is, sorry, I'm going to move this screen a little bit. What do we feel the future emotional needs of society are going to be, right? And how can we help? You know, when I when I sat down and did this, I wanted to, to focus on what are their emotional needs going to be and how are the, um, their consumer purchasing behaviors going to change. I think if we can look at those two things and sort of merge those two things, um, we will come out on top as far as being prepared for what I consider sort of our, our next stage of society. Cause we are really, we are going to change. Right. Um, so we are communicators by nature right? Any good salesperson that isn't a good communicator, I don't know that I've met them. You know, like that's, that's why we are successful. At what we do. So we can communicate not only the nuts and bolts of selling a home, but we can also give them strategies for all of what I just discussed. We can throw in that we have value in other areas other than just, you know, how to perform a home inspection, right? I think a lot of us likely do that anyway. I hear a lot of other agents say, you know, I'm a psychologist to my clients, right? So what I, what I think, you know, my message is, is that I think that it's, it's going to be needed much more in the near future. And I think that sales as a whole, that type of arena is going to be much more sort of um, emotionally charged, um, helper mentality charged um, for not only the, the physical aspects of the transactions, but the emotional aspects that people go through during a transaction. Give them proper strategies to get through it. I do that anyway right now with my clients. I set expectations. I tell them how a transaction is going to make them go like this, right? And that is that is pre-COVID. Um, that's what I do at my buyer consult and that's what I do at my seller listing presentation. So then when it happens, they're like, oh, I'm acting kind of crazy right now. Maybe you told me that would happen, right? And, and then it takes some of the fear out of it. And I think that we will see, again, more heightened emotions. And I think the more we can set expectations around that, it's really going to help. Also, setting, um, letting them know about certain things that they can do that have helped with us. And also telling them the typical outcomes of things. Because people are very fear-based right now. So if we can focus on the typical outcomes, you know, i.e., um, you know, this is what normally happens at a home inspection. And these are the things that, that could cause you stress. And but don't worry, it's normal. You know, if there's a fix for everything, um, you know, money fixes everything, you know, all those little things that we might say on the regular right now, I think it's more important to reiterate to them because when their stress levels get high, that's when they're going to want to terminate. That's when they're going to want to pull back. That's when they're going to want to do all those things that we see sort of, on a microcosm right now, but I think we're going to see at a much larger scale. Um, and, you know, also let them know that voicing their opinions and particularly what a client is, um, you know, they're thinking something, but they don't say it. They think they're going to be judged or they think that they're, or, you know, you start to get that first little indication that a client wants to terminate a deal or something like that. Anybody that's been doing this for a while knows those cues let them give them the free reign to talk about it right say like look i can tell something's up i can i can tell you something let's chat about it be that communicator and spearhead the, the conversation and the big one that that i really feel and again i have nothing to truly warrant this other than um you know when we look at the studies of how people handle stress i think that we are going to see a lot of heightened emotions in the near future as people unravel from this. And it is going to be our role to listen without judgment. We, you know, we have to step away from, oh my gosh, I got the, I got the difficult client or I got the unrealistic or the irrational client. 
I expect that if we can prepare for the fact that there will be a lot of them and to sort of jump right into that and help them versus saying, I don't want to deal with this one. I'm going to move on to the next one. Um, you will see a great amount of success. And if those are the people that you can help, um, those are the ones that are going to refer you. I'll tell you some of my most difficult deals are my, my greatest referral base because they saw me in the midst of the, the worst and I was able to help them. The easy deals, I mean, yeah, those are great. I mean, when nothing happens, it's easy to say that you were a champion agent, but the difficult deals, the ones or the difficult emotions around the deals with clients, if you can help then, that's where you will really stand out. Um, and again, and I mentioned this briefly before, educate people on the psychological impact. Prepare them for how their heightened emotions are going to be in a transaction. Okay. Um, and with people with so much uncertainty going on, you need to be a pillar of strength. I understand we all have good and bad days, um, but when you walk out that door, you cannot let them see if you, have, if you are fear-based, they will pick up on it. And that is really not what people need now. And probably for the next six to 12 months, this is, they're going to be feeling it. We need to counter it and we need to give them confidence as well as consumer confidence. Okay. Now, one thing that we should understand as well is that this sort of epidemic that we're going through, it has a two prong effect. So there's going to, there's the immediate physical uh, effects right now, people that are getting ill and also the immediate job losses and everything, but the psychological effects in the future, they're future based and they're the second prong of it. And what has been studied around people that have been through uh, pand like pandemic type situations or, or trauma or things like this, where they're, they're house born for a while is that the, there's a lot of future job ab absenteeism. A lot of people cannot cope. Right now they're in fight or flight mode, but when we get back to the everyday, we're going to start to see people that can't get back to work, start to get depressed, all of those types of things. Now for us, what does that amount to? What does that lead to? You know, you, job loss leads to home loss or home si uh, downsizing or, you know, moving provinces or all those types of things. So we, we need to be prepared for that type of clientele coming into the market because the person that is selling their home to buy the next big bright shiny is very different than the person that is selling their home because they're about to go bankrupt, right? And I think that, that that negative situation has always been there and that we deal with it, but it's been a small part of what we see in our consumer base. And I think that we will see a larger, a larger uh, subsect of it. So be prepared for those um, harder situations, right? Um, so, this is the one where you know we really want to focus on which is how is the cons current consumer behavior changing uh so i did a bunch of studying and really i, I went to ernst and young global which is where i found a lot of the info and i won't get into all the stats but i will tell you sort of the cole's notes of it all there's a huge focus right now on food supply but not only food supply but quality food going back to cooking all right where do people cook in their kitchens, right? So this is going to be a, a very large, I believe if I'm gonna project, you know, where, where we're going and this is sort of on the next slide, but so many people are bringing it back home, um, learning an art that was lost for a long time. So the bright shiny kitchen that maybe didn't have enough counter space, maybe isn't the one that's gonna be as appealing as it was before. It might be more function-based, what have you, but there's, there's like um, over 30%, um, uh, people are spending over 30% uh, what they were on food right now. So it, it's not just the quantity, but it's the quality. People are willing to spend more money on quality. Digital transformation. All right. Anybody that wasn't using Zoom, DocuSign, online mediums, whatever, is now. Um, my husband is a mortgage broker and they were behind us as far as the online signature programs. Insurance agents were behind us. Everybody was behind us on all of those platforms and they all pivoted in like two weeks. It was a huge transformation. So for consumers, all of the consumers that were on the fringe of doing that, maybe they were older and they didn't want to, uh, I, you know, I don't want to learn how to do that. I don't want to learn how to do online banking. You know, you've heard that before from, from family members and stuff. They're, they have had to, right? They've had to do that. So what will happen is that's not something you come back from. Once you learn that skill and you learn that ease of that skill, 
you, you integrate it. So if you yourself are not up, up to snuff on all of those um, mediums that can help your business online, you really need to be uh, because it's, it's forever more. Rise in online shopping, huge, obviously, huge rise in online shopping. <laughs> yeah, a few hands raised. Huge rise in online shopping. Obviously, out of necessity, there's a rise in online shopping. But interestingly enough, um, the way and what people are buying is very different than it was before. So um, in the online shopping forum, what people are focusing on are there's, there's two things that they're really spending money on or two areas. Um, one is homemade and local, right? So people are opting to pay more money for something from somebody that's local because we've seen what's happened to our small business. Um, and, and they want to know where they're, especially, you know, with health issues, they want to know where their stuff is coming from, right? They also want to help that they feel uh, they've helped the local economy, right? Because we have been hit so hard. And then the second thing that was very interesting was that what people purchase. So the, the, the necessities, um, you know, like the clothes, the sneakers, the hairbrushes, the, the like, you know, whatever we do in the, in, in the regular, people are being more conservative on that, but they're spending on certain luxuries. So if you have hobbies that you haven't done in 20 years or you want to pick up new hobbies, um, you know, baking, arts and crafts, uh, you love certain technology because the movies are fat, you know, like whatever it is, digital movies or whatever, people are investing in the things that they love. So what is happening is less money is being spent on the everyday and more money is being spent on the very specific things that people love. So we're going to see that translate into what, how people purchase homes, right? Um, or deal or, per, so how is this going to help with not only how people purchase homes, but how they select their agent, um, you know, all of those different things. So the first thing is, you know, they are, we have learned um, that the value in a lot of people and a lot of their roles is, is, is to connect. Also right now we are focusing on local, as I just mentioned in their, in our purchases and everything we're banding together as well for, you know, under, under the unfortunate umbrella of tragedy, we're banding together with, um, you know, online fundraisers and everything. So we are learning to reconnect with our local environment and caring about those around us. So when we go, when our consumer goes in the future, to pick their real estate agent, are they gonna pick somebody that they feel that they can connect to, somebody that they relate to, or are they gonna pick somebody that they think is just a big big roller and can sell the home? You know, I think in past, especially in, in the previous past, I've seen this change recently, but it's always been about, you know, who sells the most amount of this and what are, what are trans, you know, transaction rates, our percentage rates of, of list to sale and all that type of stuff. Um, Quite honestly, I think that might look a little showy in the future. I think people are going to want to see the more humble, approachable person. Not that you can't sell that same amount. Of course, we all, you know, we want to be the successful agent, but we need to be careful about how we show up in the world um, in our marketing and how we show up in the world in the way that we connect to our clients. Remind them that we are like them and then they will want to help us just as we want to help them and they will want to use us, right? So... Big, huge. That's the big thing everybody is focusing on is the food supply. So I expect that the art of cooking is coming back. If you work with a lot of clients, you may notice, for example, that the um, the foreign clientele has a much different stance on the kitchen than the than the North American clientele. We don't really. A lot of us don't really cook, right? But then you get people that are from away, and cooking is is the the lively, it's, it's the hearth of the home. It is what everything is surrounded around that kitchen. So in that regard, we may see that they are more important. Now, how could it be the functionality? Um, could it be that a home that it has a more updated kitchen and functional kitchen versus the other areas of the home might be more coveted? It's hard, it's hard to say, we don't know, but definitely I would think about the fact that people are really focusing on cooking right now. Um, okay. We've all been locked in houses for what seems like 42 years, and we are reassessing what we need in our home and where our home is located. Um, I expect that 
we will better be able to explain functionality to clients. They're gonna, they're gonna want to figure out what is a functional space for them much more so than, you know, the updated bathroom or the, you know, the, the whatever it is, the, the, the paved, the garage that's been, the driveway that's been recently paved or what have you. Like really it's gonna be about function. Um, probably bedroom sizes, you know, being a good size, that type of thing. Um, location. So I expect that we are going to want, or we're going to see people that want more aspects of nature in their life. I guarantee you, everybody that's been in a high rise condo, especially everybody that maybe has kids or what have you, I guarantee you, they're going to be starting to look for homes. And I already have them. People are calling me the saying, I got to get out of my condo. I, I wasn't going to buy or I wasn't going to change for the next six months or two years or whatever, but I got to get out now. And I think that will carry forward. They'll realize that, you know, they, they need to upsize cottages. Are we going to see more people that want to be able to escape to nature? Um, I did it. Um, uh, I think that, and I'll tell you, it it's, was never have I sat back and gone, oh my goodness, having nature around me is a gift. I am a busy person and I have not in past paid attention to that. I bought a home with almost no backyard because I didn't want to deal with it. You know, that has been me. And now I'm like, give me nature. I'll figure it out. I don't know how to work with nature. I don't know how to do the mowing and the this and the that, but I want it, right? So I expect that we will see um, a lot of people looking for that type of thing um, as well, um, upsizes in homes. So maybe it's not a condo, maybe it's not a building, but they've been in the semi, they've been in the bungalow, they've been wavering, but now they're like, yeah, this pandemic showed me we've outgrown the home, right? So digital transformation, get on board guys. Get on board. If you're not familiar with how to do everything from <laughs> this on the fly, get on board because people, when people start to really um, use digital, which they have before, but I think that we're going to have, you know, like the, the older generation and different people, it hasn't hit as much hop on board. They're going to expect us to be even more immediate than we are because when they're online, they want us to be online. Um, when they're looking at things and they want the answer to a question, it's immediate. And, and now it's, it's even more so than before uh, that they figured stuff out. It's their, their expectation is that we're gonna know these platforms better than them and that we're gonna be quicker than them. So rise in online shopping. So for us, as marketers branding ourselves, where are we going to be spending our marketing money? I know we've all been doing it online, obviously, but for people that maybe are still doing some of the, um, you know, ways of, I started to revert back a little bit. I thought my mind was, well, everybody's doing online. So let's revert back to some sort of, you know, print media. Um, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm pulling that back because everybody is really, and they've done studies in China where, um, you know, they're coming out of this post COVID now, like they, they're releasing some of the um, stringent rules that they had and the online purchasing, which increased dramatically during COVID has not dropped. So again, it's fairly early, but I expect that it, it will just continue. So get your marketing presence online. Right now you have time, focus on some marketing platforms, um, focus on some, um, brand building and campaigns, whatever you can do to get yourself out there, right? And demands for specific items. So there's such a demand for even people that are being financially conservative, they're um, really willing to pay for their luxuries. So well, how does that translate in homes? Well, I expect that people are going to be okay with paying premiums for, you know, their home gyms. I know my husband would right now. <laughs> um, theater rooms, like the beautiful kitchens, whatever it is. So not that we can create homes with their specific demands or that we necessarily can find homes that have those specific needs because, you know, they are rare, but we need to listen to our clients when they tell us what they want. Because I expect when they tell us what they want, they're going to really want it. Whereas before, you know, they had the 10 things they wanted, they could give or take on some of them. I expect that the ones that are important are very important and they're not going to be things that they're willing to um, let go of. And also I think that the, they will pay a premium for them. The biggest one is that we have the greatest opportunity 
to explain to our clients right now more so than ever the value of a house as an asset. How much is oil worth right now? Nada. Um, how much are, are stocks plummeting? How much are all these things dropping dramatically almost overnight, right? It's like people, all of their savings just went down. Some people that were invested in that stuff. How much have home values dropped? Well, we don't know for the future, but we know in the, the immediate, very little. So what we do know is that when something like this happens, home values may drop, but it's at a much slower rate than the other investments, which allows people the ability to, you know, get out if they need to or do what they need to do. Um, so especially where people are sitting in their homes and feeling blessed to have a home, um, I think it's making them focus on the fact that men are they glad that they do own one or people that don't own one are realizing that it truly is an investment before i bought my first home i had told myself that renting was just as fine as home ownership it didn't matter um now if i had had somebody explain to me sort of that sense of of roots you know of having and owning a home and also the investment aspect of it i would have bought much earlier than i did uh, will this amount to more investors I would think so. I mean, you know, um, it's one of the most stable things right now. Yes, people are looking for deferrals and that type of thing, but, but the values are still strong. So I expect when people have lost money in other areas that they are gonna to want to invest in something that's safer. Um, and homes are definitely it. Um, Multi-units are definitely it because there's always renters. So I expect that we will see a rise in, in investors. So um, really, when we recap on some of the things, they're going to help grow and drive our business. Ask as many questions as possible. And I don't just mean questions about their timelines on buying and everything like that. Truly listen to them. Um, become the psychologist. If you have a feeling like they want to tell you something or they're not sure if they can, you know, talk to you about their re what their real needs are, or what they're struggling with right now, pick up on that cue and, and be an open book um, and be there uh, for them to talk and to truly listen. If you haven't done it before, and I'm sure you all have because agents are notorious for that, but really start to make some space for your clients and letting them say what, they, what they're feeling obviously provide knowledge and educate. So when we talk about projections on the future of our housing market, provide knowledge, educate, do not speculate, especially in this world of fear right now. Uh, if you don't know, let them know that you don't know, right? That's what I do. I don't pretend to know what our future housing market is like. I let them know what I think. Um, and I let them know that overall, I think it's probably one of the safest um, arenas that you could be investing in right now. Get familiar with the future shift in values, okay? You need to be open and watch for how people are changing what they find important, how they find it important, how they want to connect with people, how they, you know, whether, again, when we briefly talked about um, the items in the homes that are important to them and that type of thing, be in tune with it because it's going to be important that you pick up on it before it actually starts to really translate because then you're going to look like the agent that has all the answers to their questions, right? Be prepared for the future emotional fallout. Um, charged deals, right? Rocky deals. Make, make great allies with your colleagues because I think that we, we may need it in the near future with clients. Uh, we, we have been and will be probably much more so than before psychologists for our clients and create a high level of consumer confidence. And I don't say this by saying like, Oh, everything's fine. Or, you know, the market is just going to go crazy. It's all in about how you present yourself. If you show up to them and you feel you appear confident, you appear knowledgeable, you let them know um, where the market is at right now. Um, they will feel safe. And if they feel safe, they will continue to be consumer. They will continue to purchase and sell right now, whereas otherwise they may not feel safe and they may want to hold back. All right. Um, people will remember how we make them feel. So at the end of a transaction, what really is going to 
uh, be, the, be the lifeblood of, blood of your future referral basis. How did you make that person feel? Whether it was a, a messy transaction, uh, a great transaction, um, you know, one that was fairly nondescript with no bumps. I have very few of those. I mean, I think a lot of us have very few of those. Um, but really, it was how we handled them. Uh, is going to be really the most important thing. And when we market ourselves in this new paradigm, keep all of that stuff in mind. Appear confident, but open. Um, you, you know, I, I think that we may want to be careful about how showy we appear. Showy does not mean we can't show that we're successful. Um, th there's certainly a nuance to being able to show that you are successful without, um, you know, gloating or showing wealth or those types of things, because people are going to be hurting in the near future and they're going to want somebody that is approachable to their needs. Um, and keeping in mind with marketing within that paradigm, I also think that how we market again, online, the digital future, that needs to change very, very quickly as well. If you can capture some of these, I don't know if I've given you any specific things to do, but if I've at least opened your eyes to where I think you need to start doing some research, I think you will find a market difference in how your client responds to you and how how much they want to express their gratitude and let others know about you. Because I've been saying this to my team and I have been saying this to Deb, but who we show up as right now is who we're gonna be remembered as for many years to come. This is a pivotal time in history and in 10, 15, 20 years, who you were right now, that is who, that's your legacy. Quite honestly, it really is because in times of stress, you either fall or you rise and you want to be the person that is rising and showing your strength for others to follow suit. Um, yeah. So I don't know. That is really everything. I don't know if anyone has any sort of questions or if this resonated at all. Um, I'm going to try and get us back to non screen share. If I know how to do it. I wish it was a little bit better with technology here. Wait, I got it. I got it. I got it. Yay. Okay. So yeah, I don't know um, what resonated for you, if anything did. What I will tell you is that I am, <laughs> Anita says, I've always felt real estate is a roller coaster. Exactly. It really, really is. So, you know, I know you have all said this in your career, but we have learned how to manage that roller coaster and, and keep in mind that many people are really experiencing it for the first time in their lives on, on a more than a one or a two or three day um, type situation. And it, it's, it's large scale and we are prepared for that. We can, we can, you know, let them uh, show them how to, I always tell people you got to ride the wave, you know, life is a wave of emotions. Sometimes, you know, you, you, you hit your peak and you're super happy and then you crash and then, but you know what, there's another wave coming one after the other. So as agents, we have learned how to navigate and ride that wave very well. Um, otherwise, we're not in the business for very many years. If we can show others how to do that, I think we will uh, stand out. So um, that's all I have for today. I hope there was something that you picked up. Um, I wish you all a wonderful day. This is recorded if you want to look at it. Honest to goodness, please text me anytime, call me, uh, anything. If you ever have any insight you'd like to add, I would love to hear. I love to, to constantly be seeing other people's perspectives. And I, um, if I can ever help, I'm here as well. Okay? Thank you. Back to you later. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Maggie. Thanks. Thank you, Maggie.